Wait, what's your rating? My rating is going to be yellow. Yellow? Wait for TV, uh, wait for DVD. Yeah, my rating is really not even a matinee. T- no, no. Here's the, it's it's such a drop. Oh, it's shut such up. a drop. Oh, shit. You have like it, like I'm always back and forth on whether Batman Begins or Dark Knight is the better, and then this is just like C level student. So, okay, my only big problems is like I said, things are cram tight. But the thing the thing with spoiler Talia, which is played by Miranda, and Tate. that's what I've been waiting to talk about. I wanted to wait till you brought it up. Yeah. She holds back Bane the entire she movie does. because they're waiting Bane, for that. Yeah, Bane is this huge character. And, but they don't build on him because they because if they explain the plot, if they explain his plan, if they explain his motivations, his backstory, they're going to reveal Talia. And they were saving that to the last 20 minutes, and so it held Bane back. Well, the thing is, like, the whole part where uh, Bruce is in the uh, the prison, yeah. which I love that form of, like, the uh, the prison being a like symbolic connection to his the first movie with yeah the, with with he was yeah, like, I did he like found that in prison, I love yeah. the connection to like why did we fall Bruce and, like, and not only I, that but he starts out in prison and Batman begins go back right. to the very beginning yeah. he's in prison like, I, like, I love that some of those little, yeah. there's a lot of full you're not the there. devil you're practice yeah. like going um, back <laughs> but um which by the way called it uh, <laughs> I was right wasn't I? <laughs> anyway so um but when the story they keep telling Bruce when he's in the prison makes you think that. Bane is the child of Ra's al Ghul, that we're going with a son instead of a daughter. Yeah. And I was like watching it going, what? I'm like, well, you know what? This is Nolan. I, I'll let it go. I'll let Bane be that person. And we don't have to have Talia al Ghul. He kept saying, we're not going to have Talia al Ghul. And I was like, I'll be fine with Bane being the ultimate villain. Even though they had a young Talia al Ghul cast. Even though I went in, I went in knowing that. I went in knowing that. And I saw the little girl on screen look like a, look very asexual. Yeah. And I was just sitting there. And then like at the end, they're like, that was Talia. I'm like, Right, I should have known that. I saw the cast list. I was like, <laughs> ah. which I guess but, is a testament to the story because I ate it. But I ate that, it up. But there, but I, I didn't like that because they build Bane up to be this big BA, you know, Banff, so to speak, and then like they kind of cut him down. Yeah, they cut him down. They completely emasculate him, and then he dies just right, right after that. Supposedly, he got shot. Supposedly, he dies. There's a lot of conception that, like Nolan likes to do with a lot of his films, is leave a little opening. Le- speaking of leaving opening. I really don't like the ending, the very ending with Alfred. Okay, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you got first retort on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply to this real quick. The ending, the the sacrifice play that we see yeah. from Batman. Uh, I'm not gonna go into how it happens, but the whole thing is that we've been building up to this entire time that Batman's supposed to die. Yeah, Legend will end. Up. Yeah, now. He does a sacrifice play, and they show Alfred at his funeral. He's losing it, apologizing right. to the to it's the an grave. Scene. He's apologizing to the gravestones of Martha and Thomas Wayne, saying, right. "I failed to protect your son. You trusted me, and I failed you. Right. And I am ready to lose it." We just I'm, heard that. I was we just heard that uh, eulogy from Gordon from the Tale of Two Cities, yeah. which, interestingly enough, is about a guy who takes someone's spot in an execution. Right. Go read the book. Uh, and. Um, but it and it's French Revolution, which also comes into this movie very much so about economic stuff and the kangaroo courts. Right. But anyway, um, I start losing it. I'm like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. Yeah. And then what do we see at the end? For, wait, first we see uh, supposedly the autopilot's been fixed. Yeah, that's right. The autopilot. When, when that comes I first into play- when I first heard that, I was like, like I, I felt a lot of audience members that were in the midnight showing with me felt the same thing. It was like, wait a minute. What? Yeah. And here's the thing. We start getting mad in our in our show. We we're like, come on. Like you just did this beautiful death sequence. Yeah. You just did this beautiful eulogy. You a did this be- off. And not only that, you had somebody ready to take his place. Yeah. So everything was set up in motion anyway. So to have Bruce Wayne live through it, you can't change the world, but, make the great sacrifice, and live to see it. What, 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 what a lot of people have said a lot, and I feel the same way, is what they should have done is when Alfred's in Florence. Yeah. So anyway, just ha- I don't think we've been clear. Bruce Wayne is shown after his supposed death. But what they what it shows is Alfred nodding and smiling to a Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle together. Yeah. Supposedly they use the uh, the software thing to erase themselves from from existence, right? Yeah. In a sense. But what 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 my problem was what they should have just done was just had him nod and left that it make us interpret does he seen because they showed something seen? similar to well, that at the beginning right. where he's looking at someone who looks like Bruce yeah. in that same cafe. Because well, what they could have done was this whole inception thing of like, did he see it? And what it could have been, what it could have said was, Alfred is seeing Bruce Wayne, or Alfred wants to see Bruce Wayne so badly to comfort his own soul. And not only that, but here's the know? thing: it also goes back to the th- the eulogy they gave, which is like, I go on to a better rest. Yeah. Which is all about because here's the thing: as long as he was alive, he was never not going to be Batman. Right. But now that he's passed, Alfred can envision him as a happy man with a family, right. living a good life. But I'm saying just leaving Alfred nodding and smiling yeah. would have been enough. And then we could cut to back to uh, John Blake discovering. Again, what do I always say with this, with bad decisions and stuff like that? I see a guy smoking a cigar going, it's too sad. 
put it up and stuff like that. And I, the I same thing, the same thing with that. Se- remember the segment with um, they show like right before he goes and fights Bane, where they do every gimmick Batman has done throughout the entire movie, where he's like hanging upside down, saying here and stuff like that. Again, I see that fat guy smoking a cigar. Producer going, I want him hanging upside down again, saying here. Tested well with the audience. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and no one's like, fine. We're throwing it all in one scene. Just get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought. Well, that's one thing. I think part of, part Nolan. Because the other movies, no one was given almost free reign. I, th- I, think, I think, we, think there was I, a little Warner Brothers. I think we overestimated how much range he had on this because it seemed like there was a tight rope on this. Yeah. It seemed like there was a pretty tight leash in this. One. We thought, yeah, we thought, we th- I thought Warner Brothers was going to let him. control was clearly not think, all in yeah. no one's pocket. Yeah, because I, th- I, 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 I wonder that. I wonder what kind of ending he really wanted. And they were like, no, we got to make it s- nice and happy. Yeah, hey, you're Americans, right? God forbid you cry. Uh, <laughs> right, but uh, but I, I just want to say I do you like know, Jesus died. I'm just throwing that out there. You look at that he, guy all the time. But he rose three days later. Oh, <laughs> <geez. laughs> <Damn you. laughs> but no, but I do like how he handled the Robin. Went to France. Uh, I like how he handled the Robin though, John Blake. Yeah. Uh, now the one thing I was wondering is his name John Robin Blake or John Blake Robin. Uh, it sounds like Robin John Blake. But here's the thing. Okay. By the way, in the ki- in the comic books, one of the Robins' the last name is Drake. And I guess they didn't want fanboys like me going and going, oh, Drake, it's totally Robin. They just didn't want us to catch on. So I was like, all right, I can see change in the name. I, I, went, I went, when I saw it the second time with someone, they asked me, I thought, I thought Robin was a, uh, a tightrope. You know, Cirque is like, well, there's other incarnations There's three of Robin. incarnations yeah. of Robin. Uh, the first one is Dick Grayson, which is the tightrope walker. The second one is Jason Todd, yeah. who becomes Red Hood. And he's kind of like pseudo-criminal boys home type. So they kind of incorporated that. And then they have, finally... That's right, Tim Drake. And um, he uh, he actually is the one in the comics, even Batman was always saying, he goes, if anyone's going to pick up the mantle, it's going to be this one. Because he's got a head on his shoulders and he's tough as nails. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, but, but I like how he handled that. Like he said, I'm not going to have Robin. He's really, like, he didn't have a traditional Robin. And oh, yeah. But you, you know? see the tutelage throughout the time. He oh, goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, why, oh, I love, why the I mask? Love, I love what happens when he finally, I hate to interrupt you, but when he shoots somebody. Yeah, he the ricochet. It. Yeah, and he looks at the gun. That was brilliant. I will give credit with that because he does the ricochet. Because I was ricochet. afraid of that. Like, he's a cop. He's supposed to shoot people, you know? Yeah, and then he's like sitting there and he's like sitting there. He's like, what are you guys planning? And he's like trying to interrogate a dead witness. And he looks at the gun and he's just angry because he realizes he can't get any more information this way. And so um, it shows that he's picking up on the no gun thing. Right. Which is important. Um, and, you know, there's like moments when Batman's actually teaching him. Like, he, he tells Bruce Wayne. But anyway, so that's our little rant for The Dark Knight Rises. I liked it. He didn't. It has, it has problems, but if you watch it more than once, a lot of the problems will be fixed a little bit. You say that. However, I will say this. As far as it's not a bad movie, it's, I will a, say, it's I will a bad, say, good movie. I will say this. One big thing I love throughout the whole movie, it's a freaking score. Well, yeah, you know, no, Hans Zimmer is just you no know. like what he just real quick. What he did with the Joker was he had this little weird ping being yeah. played, and this one you had that chant of rise that, that yeah, yeah, like that, they had the chanting the that constantly, rock. and yeah. like chanting Whenever was incorporated saw, a lot. Like yeah. you got the football sequence, the, yeah. the the prison. So I'm just saying, score was just stupendous. Cinematography was great. One little problem with editing, but I think that was purposely done. But I don't have time to get into it. Uh, but anyway, um, I guess we'll be right back with more at. Shall met movies. Stop it. Clap on. 